I actually had to go to a movie premiere of one of my books. I think it was The Rules of Attraction, uh, where I had stayed up all night and I did not want to go. And I went there and I was, uh, well, then I just found more Coke. So it was okay. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, but then I also remember that I had to do a commentary track for The Rules of Attraction in 2002, still into my Coke phase. And I'd been up all night partying and I got a call saying, you have to be at the screening room at you know, 1230, they're going to record you for two hours as you, and I went and I literally just said, oh, that, yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah, and I, that's really nothing intelligent from my, but they didn't use any of my commentary or anything. It was just me going, yeah, yeah, I really like that thing. Like, yeah, yeah, that seems really good. Yeah, that's from my book. <laughs> and I had brought a pocket of Coke with me. I kept going to the bathroom. I had poured a bunch of tequila into a Diet Coke can that I brought with me up to the screening room. I was fucking lit well you know and it was just and you know and then you know what they ended up they got so pissed what? at me that they ended up getting carrot top to do my commentary oh what a, what a humiliation <laughs> well you know what i remember brett um very distinctly was it was friday nights when it, when we were when we were both in town we would have dinner and after dinner we would call the dealer and but over the years what i remember is that Instead of making, you know, we used to have dinner at 8.30 and then like call the dealer at 11. And then eventually... Seven. And then eventually it was like 8 and then 7, 30, 30 7, Because there was this like, there was this as sense, my, as sense, the first drink. sense of urgency that we had to get going. And you would always leave in the middle of dinner uh, yes, to right. like go and meet the dealer. And, 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 the, and the party, frankly, extended longer and longer into the night and the morning on those weekends. You I know, mean, I mean, I over the years, it got... A little out of control. I literally, I could not, I mean, one sake at Japonica would send me to my phone to fucking call up a drug dealer and say, and, and look, it was so easy to get and we bought so much of it. I remember that I could, I could do an eight ball uh, by myself. I remember the first time I did that, I said, okay, uh, yeah, can we get, uh, oh, three and a half tickets, please. <laughs> three and a half tickets. Okay, and then uh, I remember turning around and said, well, what do you guys want? Yeah, yeah, right. And they said, I remember looking at you. what do you oh, mean? That was for you? And then, you know, when you call that drug delivery service, I mean, we were actually committing federal crimes because of the amount of Coke that we were allowed to sell. You're not allowed to sell $4,000 worth of Coke to 15 kids in an apartment on 13th Street. You're not allowed to do that. And, and I remember I said, we'll have to call you back. Let's check. Okay, bye. And then they'd always call back and go, okay, do you need anything else? <laughs> and they did. For a while there, that service had Vicodins. They had Clonopins. They had these giant reefers that they would sell that I smoked one time that got me so crazily paranoid that I found myself running down 4th Avenue at 7 in the morning. I mean, <laughs> thinking people were bugging my apartment <laughs> and trying to get in and kill me. <laughs> Michaels. Michael, yeah. Michaels. It was a service based on the Upper West Side. It's a drug dealer named Michael, and he had runners. He had runners who were all good-looking young guys in black suits that came down in private cars and yeah. and walked into. They looked totally respectable. They were like male models. Well, yeah, which is because and we, they had we, a briefcase and they walked. Because we both up. had doormen, so yeah, we had, doormen. You, you, right. you wanted them to look a right. little bit respectable. So, right, respectable. And so they would come in, flip open the briefcase, and they had massive envelopes of coke, of weed, of pills, of Xanax, of Valium, of whatever you wanted. <laughs> And I remember buying, oh, I'll take a, a eight bars of Xanax. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Can I, can I get a couple clonopins on that? <laughs> and then um, and I think I'm going to get another eight ball just for uh, maybe tomorrow. <laughs> it was just ridiculous. And, but I also, I have to say this. I'm a control freak. I have to yep. say I'm a control freak. And I didn't want to get work done. So I did kind of plan out a 36 to 48 hour yep. debauchery. And I knew that I wanted to get four, four, at least four days of Writing done right. that week. I would be in hell that Monday or whatever, right. but I was going to, God damn it, get the book done. <laughs> and so, and I think maybe that's why it took me nine years to write Glamorama, <laughs> that I might have been able to write that book a lot faster if I had it. That book should have taken three years to, to write, but with all the drugs. <laughs> 